95.3 and 101.1 The Eagle. I'm Fred Tomlinson. We have John Waite on the line right now. Where are you at right now, John? Uh, I'm in Santa Monica on the balcony looking oh. out at some palm trees and some, some fog, actually. Oh, that's too nice. Yeah. Hey, I want to do this right off the bat because I know you got a birthday coming up, right? Early happy birthday yeah. to John oh, Waite. God. You know, we celebrate yeah. your birthday with fireworks, don't you? Yeah, it's weird being born on the 4th of July and being English. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know... In my heart, I think I'm an American. I, I, as English as I am, I, I believe in America, and I believe in the, the fact that there's so many people from around the world uh, came to America to be Americans. And uh, the ideology of it is uh, pretty beautiful. And, um, yeah, God bless America. Cool. Well, uh, well, happy birthday. July 4th. Uh, yeah. where, where were you born, actually? Lancaster, England, 70 miles from Liverpool, going uh, northwest, and okay. it's um, 62 miles west of Manchester, I was on it, the coast, nearly, I, it's about two miles off the coast. Okay, now, uh, let me ask you this, don't all British acts from that area get compared to the Beatles? No, I mean, uh, it's a very, very musical part of Britain, uh, the northwest is just... If you're born in the Northwest, you've probably got a guitar in your hand or a, you're looking at a piano. Right. I and mean, it's just for some reason, a lot of Irish people came over and settled in the Northwest. And the Irish people have so much music in them. Um, it's just part of the world. You know, it's just part of what we do. That's fantastic. Now, uh, will we get a chance to hear any of the babies or bad English songs oh, yeah. that you sang lead no, no, on no. Saturday night? We run the gamut. Oh, we, right. uh, we, you know, we we pile it on. We we have like, hey man, there's so many hits. Every time I think of you, head first. When I see you smile, um, missing you, in dreams. If you ever get lonely, back of my feet again. We have so many songs. And we love them all. The point is I mean, what to play and what not to play. Oh. And to try and make it interesting for people by throwing a few new things in there. But it's, uh, it's a pretty um, two-fisted operation. We, we've really got the, you know, it's just great. We have a great time. Beautiful. And now is it true that you were only planning on keeping the baby's name as the band name for only two weeks? Did I hear that? Yeah, we thought we'd, you know, we, we couldn't get signed at all. And um, we just couldn't get signed. So we made a video uh, of the band playing, and we called ourselves the Babies, thinking it would be like a really off-the-wall name, and that somebody would come down and think we're like teen idols, and, and they did, which was sort of, it, it was kind of wonderful, because it backfired on us, and it was kind of like, the first idea you have is the best. But in our case, it was kind of like, wow. I mean, it just really pushed us to the front of the line. But, um, yeah, we were going to just change it to the, you know, whatever we're going to be. But um, once it got rolling, it was just huge. Right. What Now, um, I heard something about uh, you guys were playing in Cincinnati the day after John Lennon uh, was shot, yeah. and someone got up yeah. on stage and, and uh, knocked you down. No, 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 no. I, I, I spun around. Okay. Uh, when John got John Lennon got shot, I think everybody was just uh, in a daze. I think we're all. I was very upset. I mean, everybody was upset. It's not. It's like saying the sky's blue. It was just unimaginable that somebody could do that to John Lennon, especially with his uh, philosophy about trying to bring the world together and give peace a chance, and his outspoken views on everything that was right you know mm -hmm. and somebody shot him all right now but i was just walking around kicking things and i was so angry it was unbelievable as everybody was and i think i was on stage performing these songs i was just just about to explode really i can't really explain it but um i spun around and my knee didn't go with me and uh i kind of threw all the cartilage in my knee and went down like a a sack of coal, as we say in England. Right. And that was it. And we went on to Akron the next night and played there. But I got carried off stage. I was in so much pain, I just couldn't perform. Wow. It just, that was the end. But did it was I, yeah. To go out that's what I understand. Night. Akron was the last, uh, the last live that you guys did, right? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, Chrissy, Chrissy Hine came from Akron. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, as 
kind of off the wall as it might sound, it seemed like, you know, I admire Chrissy very much and I thought it was kind of sweet to sort of end that chapter of my life mm-hmm. in a place that she was born. It just seemed kind of cool. How, how interesting that the rest of that group, the Pretenders, was from the UK, right? Yeah, weird. <laughs> I, you know, incredibly weird. Yeah. Uh, anything interesting that you can tell me about the naming of the next band that you started, Bad English? No, not really. Uh, I think we're playing pool, and you put English on a ball, <laughs> and uh, we're bad, and there you go. You know, it wasn't a big deal. It was just like a name. We couldn't find anything, you know. Right. Well, that, that's that's interesting, because I've wondered for weeks what that was. I thought I'd ask you. Uh, no. Well, I'm English, and I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so when uh, when I see you smile, went to number one, yeah. and uh, you went top yeah. five with the uh, Price of Love. How did that feel? Yeah, going to the top. Well, you know, it wasn't the first time, and uh, but you're always grateful when you make these records. You hope that people are going to respond, and um, you speak it from the heart. You know, so you hope people listen from the heart, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a glorious moment to get right back up there again with such a terrific band you know we were we were really capable of like um just you know setting the bar about another couple of feet higher and Mm -hmm. we did you know it's just uh just the journey guys were i think well jonathan kane was probably wanting to get back to journey but i think neil was having a great time right and uh we all were having a great time i think jonathan wasn't i think he was sort of like more concerned with uh, it's past. Well, well, we don't had a we we don't had a really great past, and we're looking to the future. But you can never tell. I have no idea what he's thinking. Were really. you all Were you all looking uh, in a maybe a different direction at that time? No, no. It just it just it stopped being a band at some point because of the uh, um, people wanted to do something else, you know. But uh, we we you know when we were good, we were really great, you know. Did you did you like being called a glam metal band? No, we weren't really. I just I'm a, I've always been a sharp dresser. I, I don't care, <laughs> you know, if I'm sort of on the street, um, going down to Whole Foods to buy a salad or something. I always like look kind of like I mean it, and I've done that since I was a kid. I mean, it's just part of being British. But we all like to dress up and look sh- sharp. You know, it's part of being a guy. Now your 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 buddies from uh, the Babies and uh, Bad English. Uh, mm. Journey has gone through some personnel changes through the years. Uh, were you ever, or would you ever consider singing with John and Neil again? Uh, no, I'd work with Neil. Well, me and Neil are talking about doing a band together right now. Oh, we're talking actually talking about making a record in about six months. That- and uh, I like that. I think that's really cool. But I don't really, um. I, you know, the journey thing is a specific thing, and the vocal sound um, is a specific thing. And I don't sing like that. I sing like blues, and it's kind of like my own style. But my influences are blues; they're not so smooth mm-hmm. as I think they might be with Journey. Um, but all respect to Journey, I, I, whatever you know. But it's not really my thing, so I don't think it would ever happen. Speaking of your thing. Um, Missing You, number one song in 84, yeah. considered a major debut artist uh, in that year. It, uh, let me tell you, it shows up as number 699 on the Billboard Top 1000 Hits of the Rock Era list. That is huge. Oh, really? You yeah. charted above I Want You Back from the Jackson 5, above Elton John's Benny and the Jets, and the Beatles come together. Wow. That's got to feel good. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, but I'm very touched. It took about 10 minutes to write it. I made the thing up on the spot. It it just, I sang the whole, it was sung over somebody else's changes in a recording studio, uh, a home studio, and I just made the whole thing up. And it took about 10 minutes. Uh, the whole first verse chorus was, was one piece. It just came out. Uh, I was married at the time. I was trying to get home to England I was trying to finish the record and I was feeling it I was worn out and tired and anxious and I missed New York which was like kind of weird because it wasn't England but I missed 
all the things that I'd become like a New Yorker. And I think some of the song is really about New York. But um, those songs that happen like that, you you cannot contrive them. You cannot sit down and say, right, we're going to write a hit. It doesn't work like that. You close your eyes and it's like a Zen thing and you step forward. If it's a rock song or a heavy metal song or a ballad, country song, blues song, that's how you write those songs. And that's how that was written. It was completely natural. And I think everybody uh, thinks they have their own meaning for a song like Missing You. Am I right? Do people walk up yeah, to you and talk about, about that? It's about trying to get through. At that point in my life, I was trying to get through the next two weeks to finish the record and get home. And uh, it was about denial. It was trying to stay tough. You know, guys try and hang tough and they always make fools of themselves, you know. As I sang it, I realized, you know, what I was actually feeling. That's interesting. Now, everyone these days kind of looks at the set list on uh, on the Internet. When you're up on yeah. stage and you're doing your own stuff your way, do you ever have moods where you feel like uh, taking the show in a different direction? Oh, absolutely. If somebody shouts out something like for the more obscure songs, I have a lot of fun and just the bands, the band, we just go into it. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we have so many songs, you know. There's the hits that people know that there are a million sellers. And then there's these there's other songs behind that that are like the real kind of McCoy. And if you can stir those into the hits, see if we can do it, you know? Right. Any any favorite songs that you personally have that you like to share that weren't necessarily hits that we should maybe look uh, for? Downtown off the Temple Bar record is a, is a huge song for me. And New York City Girl, um, If You Ever Get Lonely from the Rough and Tumble album. They're songs that are like just, I mean, man, that's on the money, you know? I mean, I got a new acoustic record coming out in about uh, six weeks. Oh, you do? And it's some new versions of like, you know, Missing You and, you know, all the songs you'd expect. But there's also the really dark songs mixed in there, too. And when I listened, I only listened to it once. I listened to it once and I couldn't take it. I didn't know who'd written it. It was like, uh, it's what I do best. And yet when I heard it in sequence some songs the masters from like 20 years ago and then new songs cut with the same guitar player Shane Fontaine he came into the studio and worked with me but that was like my biography it was like autobiography and it's called Wooden Heart and it's out in six weeks there's Wooden Heart volume two on the internet right now on, on iTunes you can get that but that's what we're doing at the moment I mean the gig we're going to play for you next week is, is a full on rock show with you know everything thrown in but we're on tour doing this uh, thing with two acoustic guitars electric bass and a small drum kit and it's like an evening with John Wake and you can ask questions and I'll play any song you come up with and I'll play Big Bill Brunsey songs or Howling Wolf or Bob Dylan mixed into it as well it's a very interesting sort of way to go so I live I live in two worlds really like a hard rock melodic kind of rock world and then the unplugged thing uh, so I couldn't be happier, really. I'm having a great time at the moment. So you have? Uh, do you still do you still play bass and sing? No. Um, I, the reason I quit was uh, I couldn't back phrase like I wanted to. Okay. And really just uh, pick my moments to come in. My phrasing got like like um, Willie Nelson. You know, Willie Nelson starts the phrase off before the bar even arrives, and the bar can go. And he's not sung that phrase yet. I mean, it's like his phrasing is nuts. But I'm the same way kind of thing. It's a blues phrasing that's behind the beat. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to concentrate on that, and I thought I'd be a better singer if I did. Having said that, I just heard some live stuff from uh, uh, the early baby stuff, and I can't believe that I was actually that in the moment. But um, I always have been kind of in the moment. That's interesting. Now, uh, okay, so you've got this uh, this one coming out uh, in about six weeks, mostly acoustical, and, and then uh, the uh, the Neil thing that you're doing. Do, do, are you coming up with a band name for that, or is it just a, a no, no? I have no idea what it's called. Okay, I mean, uh, <laughs> me and Neil are just batting ideas about and talking about how to go in real quick and do it. I don't want to spend like two months writing. I think me and Neil could probably write a whole record in about a week. 
And uh, seriously, we could. I mean, the one thing about Neil that's really tremendous is that he's all about the music. And you, you, you sing a line, of, a line of something and he just comes in with something. I mean, he's completely spontaneous. And so am I. And we haven't worked together for 20 years. And uh, I think it would be fabulous to uh, just hit it and record it. You know, I mean, just like a like a session, like 12 songs recorded live in a warehouse somewhere, you know. That should be interesting. Now, Neil, just a, what, a week or two ago said that he was just thinking about uh, doing stuff with uh, some of the guys that he hadn't seen or talked to in a long time that he had played with. So uh, I, I think he's getting this thing underway with you, isn't he? I have no idea. I mean, um, Neil's connected, man. I and mean, he's like, he's in Santana and he's, and he's, he loves to play. Right. And he keeps putting records out. Um, I mean, he's, he's music. I mean, he's like a walking piece of music. Well, that's interesting. Now, John, we're all looking forward to the show on Saturday night at Miami Valley Gaming. I understand you go on stage at 9 o'clock with a whole bunch of bands before you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us here on The Eagle. And uh, yeah. you, uh, we'll see you on uh, Saturday night. How's that sound? Well, yeah, I'll... Um I'll make sure I look sharp. All right, and I and John, I'll try to look sharp myself. How's that sound? <laughs> well, why don't you why don't you come back and say hello? I'll I will. I will. I promise you, I will. Thank you very much, John Waits. Yeah, God bless you. Thanks. So much. I enjoy the conversation. And, God bless you. Uh, enjoy the balcony, and uh, and the view there. I am. I'm enjoying it as we speak. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. 95.3 and 101.1, The Eagle and Miami Valley Gaming presents Rhythm and Brews this Saturday from 1 to 10 p.m. with 60 different beers from 24 different area breweries on tap. And John Waite on stage, uh, presented by Yingling. I'm Fred Tomlinson. I'll be out there live uh, Saturday evening broadcasting from Miami Valley Gaming. I hope to see you out there for some 80s rock fun.